Hello out there in the internets and welcome one and all to the Retro Gaming Graveyard. This is the resting place of all our dearly departed games of yesteryear that we're glad to have known but more glad now that they are gone. Now that might sound a little bit mean but let's be frank, if the games that we knew and loved didn't kick the bucket every now and again, how would there ever be room for anything new? Still, as the saying goes, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. That's the retrospective. Of course, for those of you who have been watching the videos here at Carpe GM, you're aware that we have a primary focus on role-playing games, the type that uses pencils, paper, and dice. And so the graveyard you find here will be filled with games either related to the RPG genre or related to a specific RPG. The trilogy of Dungeons & Dragons games on the Intellivision, for example. And for those of you who have been with us from the beginning, you know that there was a retro gaming graveyard before. That one was different though because, you see, uh, this one doesn't have a dash. The old one has a dash in the middle. Uh, go ahead, check. Oh wait. See? Told ya. Anyway, I mentioned RPGs, D&D, and video games so naturally. We'll be starting the first episode of the first season of the Retro Gaming Graveyard with... Adventure on the Atari 2600. Or video computer system for those of you who were around in the 1970s. Arguably the first ever role-playing game available on home consoles. Now while a Calabeth on the old Apple II predated Adventure by a little while in the same year, it didn't have the same kind of distribution, being as it was pretty much exclusive to Britain until 1980 and on a home computer. At the same time, the 2600 was the undisputed king of home video games. Most people didn't even know of another way besides the arcade to get a gaming thing. With 30 million VCS 2600 units sold versus the Apple II's 5 million, there was just more opportunity. Uh, Adventure was sold in mainstream department stores and any place else that had electronics, and of those 30 million units sold, 1 million plus people also bought Adventure. Besides, if we really wanted to go back to the beginning, we'd count DND, the old text adventure run on Play-Doh. Nobody knows what Play-Doh is anymore, though, and you don't watch videos so you can read words. So, yeah, let's skip that and all text adventures, shall we? Now down to brass tacks. Adventure was, yes, an adventure game. You ran around a maze hunting for items and using them to pass obstacles and kill enemies. You were on a hunt for a mystic artifact, and it was most certainly a fantasy setting. Fantasy plus adventure, at least in my book, registers as RPG. For the genre, it was just a start, but for the time, what a start it was. In preparing for this retrospective, I did a little research. Okay, actually, I just played the game some, considering that it's so old that I, a man nearly to my very own meaning of life, copyright Douglas Adams, was only three years old when it was released, a refresher course was in order. The story of adventure goes as follows, if a story can be called. An evil magician has stolen the enchanted chalice, and has hidden it somewhere in the kingdom. The object of the game is to rescue the enchanted chalice and place it inside the golden castle where it belongs. This is no easy task, as the evil magician has created three dragons to hinder you in your quest for the golden chalice. There is Yorgi. The yellow dragon, who is just plain mean. There is Grundle. The green dragon, who is mean and ferocious. And there is Rindle. The red dragon, who is the most ferocious of all. Rindle is also the fastest dragon and is the most difficult to outmaneuver. There are three castles in the kingdom. The white castle, the black castle, and the golden castle. Each castle has a gate over the entrance. The gate can be opened with the corresponding colored key. Inside each castle are rooms or dungeons depending on what skill level you are playing. The story continues, but really just concerns skill levels and game terms. A player's handbook it isn't, but that's okay because it definitely reflects the simplicity of the game at hand. The groundwork is laid, and so let's look at this a little more closely. You are ostensibly some sort of knight, let's call you Sir Square. Sir Square has to go and find the aforementioned chalice, and you have to kill or avoid some dragons to do it. Well, to hell with avoiding dragons, those fell beasts have to die. 
So kill some dragons with a sword that looks like an arrow. Move some portable hull type purple hallway thing so you can walk through walls. Navigate the maze and find the key to open the gate to the castle and get yourself some sweet, sweet chalice action. Lather, rinse, and repeat. And that's pretty much all there is to it. When I first saw this game, I discovered it in 1980, so it was still pretty current. It ignited my love of the fantasy genre. The next year, I just had to see Dragon Slayer in the theater, which, being very violent, made me nightmares. But I never regretted it. When D&D came out on the Intellivision in 1982, I had to have it. I keep mentioning D&D on the Intellivision, so obviously watch for those in a later episode or three. So on and so forth. And now here I am, putting hundreds of hours of video of up for perusal where I'm playing role-playing games, all started by a little knight by the name of Sir Square. How about you? What ignited your love of RPGs, be they in book, CRPG, or MMO form? Did I miss any details on this classic fantasy masterpiece? Anything else you can think of? Let me know in the comments section.